God forgive me when I ask for forgiveness, even though I doubt. Hi, my name is Ted Rosenblatt, and this is Talks with Dad Rod, and I'm here with my father, Dr. Rod Rosenblatt. We deal with doubt a lot here. Uh, we deal with a lot of fear, and one of our main subjects that we are constantly weaving through, even though there are a lot of them are very similar, is, is comfort and assurance based on the Word of God. And uh, these are these are the uh, you know what was that there was that great line in that musical about the tigers come at night. Yeah, boy, is that boy is that on point. Yep. Oof. Um, <clears throat> when we are in those fearful points, when the lights are out at three in the morning or something, and we're petrified, you know, is my is my doubt? Why will he forgive somebody like me when my my faith is so weak and I'm doubting? I'm not sure that even that the forgiveness that's spoken to me is going to do it. Yeah, <clears throat> you're describing the the disease that we all have all the time and worst at night. But <clears throat> those are fears. And the places Christ has given us to go are his promises, the ones linked with baptism, and the ones linked with the supper. Lutherans hold that those actually do something. They Christ us. Um, I've, I've grown a new appreciation, appreciation for the Brits who use the word christened, and I've come to understand what they really meant by that, Christed. The infant is Christed in baptism, christened. And so those are the things that, that Christ has given us along the way. Not that they'll erase all doubts. But he's so good in Christ that he grants that forgiveness even when we doubt it. That phrase you quote so often from Scripture, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief, is true of all of us, every Christian. And we have different ways of assuring ourselves. The Lutherans are not the same as everybody else on this. It is the Word of God. But we also believe that it's baptism and supper. And I think we go through this consistently where if we were here, if we hear something great in church, let's say we hear what you would say or we're supposed to hear. We hear the gospel preached. We hear that how we have fallen short of the glory of God and how we sinned, have sinned against him this week. You know, we get to hear about that. But then we get this 200 proof gospel, hopefully. And we we get these gifts right we get yep. you know we get the, the the body and the blood yeah the pastor says for you this is for you which is my forgiveness yeah and and he died for you and here it is so when i drink it and when i eat it it's yep. cleansing it, yeah. this is actually a forgiving <clears throat> thing that's going yeah. into my mouth yeah not everybody holds that and as i leave there and i know we've covered this before and we'll just going to keep doing it but when I leave there, I start to doubt again. Well, when I, I when I'm afraid, I, when, I get afraid that you know there's this little there's this little sure. nagging thing in my head. <clears throat> um, I remember as a teenager going forward to communion, and I'd just been looking at the legs of a woman down the pew, and I thought, do I have to go back? And the answer is, of course not. Luther's thing on preparing for communion in our hymnal, this one page thing. And one of the things he quotes, it's his own words from the catechism. Question is, who is prepared for the supper? And Luther answers, he who believes these words, given for you, shed for you. That's the preparation. The sin is, the sin is, he, if there was anybody who worked to prepare himself, it was he. Oh, I don't know if anybody understands how much he work wore he did. out. He when he was a monk, he wore out out five confessors a day because he'd leave and remember something he had, hadn't confessed. Well, he was following the Roman Church's counsel of that time. You'll be forgiven for every sin you confess. Well, and look at the penance he was working on. He was literally scrubbing the floors, and he was thinking about all the thing, Everything was condemnation. He was an ocean of condemnation. Yeah. Sle sleeping in bed without enough covers. Um, I mean, he ruined his joints uh, doing that sort of stuff. Just destroyed himself. 
He when, said my problem wasn't I was wasn't that I was a bad monk. My problem was I was a good one. And it's simply never enough, is it? Never you know, enough. We we got another question from somebody that said, uh, you know, uh, uh, was uh, will David even be um, forgiven for what he did with Bathsheba? Answer: Yes. And I know that uh, that that it made me think about how we are always looking for the unforgivable sin. We're always looking for just one too many, or where it's one too many in quantity, or it's just too dark in quality. Yep, it's either too dark, and Jesus died for a lot, but not for me because you know that that was really really bad. Yep, and and to keep being told no, he took that on, and you can't out sin the cross, which is a rhetorical term to be kind of obnoxious but it is the truth uh-huh. it is it is the, the all, he took on all our sin he took on the sin of the world and the worry about if i understand that correctly i'll use it for my own licentiousness is a vapor but we always are certain of it aren't we yep we're always we're the, always so certain that this time this one this is what the voices creep in and say in the middle of the night yep yeah not this one though the phrase that our dogmatician uh, Francis Pieper used was that we always will default to what he called the opinio legis, the legal opinion. It's our default. And the gospel has to be preached into that. And then we do our best to stop blocking it basically <laughs> and even if you there's a whole other subject even if you were not even conscious of it so the, 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 i can't i want to start i want to start this conversation now and, and we could do this all day um where we always th- at some point think that our hearts need to be receiving it well enough yes as part of the work yes not only not only do we need to be working towards it being better and being less sinful and so forth in order to you know qualify or maintain or maintain but then we also need to be receiving you know yep like perfectly right and uh and we can't it's it's not keep remembering the kind of people jesus hung around with even that the pharisees looked at that and said look at those friends of his look whom he's chosen and you can see it with Matthew. I mean, he was, you know, Matthew was hated. Yep. Matthew, there was no good, there was no friend to Matthew. Matthew had no friends, none. And and for them to levy the, you know, throw that charge out at those people was serious. They meant it. Yep. What scum. Yep. What is he doing here? And with them. And guess what? That's us. So the good news is, that uh, this is for scum like us, scum like us, while we were sinning against him. You know, those scumbags like Matthew were sinning against him in front of him, and he embraced them, embraced Matthew, and brought him in and used him. Poor Matthew. (laughs) So I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, come back for more, and we'll talk. Oh, go to 1517.org for more, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us on Talks with Dad Rod, part of the 1517 Podcast Network. This podcast and all 1517's content is made possible through financial support by listeners just like you. Please visit 1517.org for more, and please consider clicking on the donate button and making a recurring or one-time contribution to help us share this good news in a world which so desperately needs it. 